looks like Dungey on the inside with Chad Reed right next to him. Oh. But Tomax sweeping in from third to first spot. The official motorsport.com hole shot will go to Dungey. And Weston Pike able to make some moves. He's up to third now. Man. Ah, oh, man. Cole Seeley had a good Supercross season, was coming on strong. But this guy has been phenomenal today. He has been on rails in that very, very long time. Dungey going to try to hang with him here. The number five in second. Pike third. Blake Baggett up to fourth. Running pretty well right now. But nobody running as well as the Geico Honda band. Eli Tomac, who has a 3.8 second lead. But now they've got in the lap traffic. He got held up in a few spots. And Ryan Dungey took what was once a 4.7 second lead down to two and a half. But even without some of the traffic, Dungey, when he has a clean lap, takes a few tenths off every time. And then it seems like he might make a little mistake. It is just under three seconds. So we'll see Ryan Dungey coming into the picture. And there he is. So there is no one between him and him. The, the, oh, what we see. Uh, Tomac has lapped yeah. all the way through. Shoo. Tomac is absolutely tearing this field apart. This is considered still a family sport. Go, don't get me wrong, Eli Tomac's got a lot of very, very smart individuals around him as he just jumps at Doug. Makes it look so easy. I Ian Trey Kennard and Cole Seeley had in Supercross clearly moving forward in motocross. It's going to be good too. Eli Tomac dominates the first motor of the season. It's a Kawasaki. Chad Reed's going to lead him in. Who's going to get the official hole shot? Eli Tomac steals it as well, but it's Tomac to the point position again. Uh, he snuck that one out from Chad Reed, that hole shot. Oh, oh Tomac on the track. Lands right on that. Uh, up front, Eli Tomac making even the 150-footer look easy. And he has 15 seconds over your two-time champion, Ryan Dungey. Lethal, because he can do this kind of stuff. As we take a look back, that is not your second-place rider. That is a lapper. Wow. So the gap that... Tomac has right now astronomical second year for him in the 450 class and he missed half of the supercross races last year with injury and just about half of the uh, motocross races last year dominant performance a minute 11 second lead over Dungey we're gonna be checking the record books this might be one of the most dominant wins we've ever seen in the 450 class I've been looking at the lap time he's been averaging over six seconds a lap quicker than anyone on the track that is astronomical See there, that's how far up <laughs> in the field he has gone he left into the top 10 of Moto 1. He dominates Moto 2. Eli Tomac. Eli Tomac has already had a chance to get cleaned up, smile for the camera, get the hat on. He had a minute plus lead. Justin Barsha is going to grab the whole shot of the auto trader Toyota Yamaha. But right now it's the Yamaha's up front. Welcome back, Josh Grant in 33. He's fifth. Ryan Dungey, Chad Reed going at it for third. Uh, motor for Ken Rock. Oh, how about this? Phil Nicoletti makes the pass on Justin Barsha, so he is leading here at Glen Helen. A whole lot of information to be given after one lap. No lap times, whatever. But look at this. Tomac, ET3, round the outside. Look at that. Wow. He's in the pitch, he loses valuable, valuable time. Barsha going back to work on Nicoletti. Nicoletti makes a mistake. Barsha into the lead. And that's got to feel good for him. It's oh. been a rough season. Dungey Nicoletti. He's hoping right now that Nicoletti. Nicoletti can play robot, but Tomac's Woo! momentum and his just outright speed, he's just attacking this track. Dungey around the outside. This is that supercross type section. A couple of tight turns and some jumps. Dungey, well that was easy, to the inside. Town with some injuries, but he's back today. Metcalf eighth, Baggett ninth, Christophe Horsell is tenth. And you see the countdown clock, top of the screen. So 30, well here's where Dungey made the move on Barsha. Let's see if Tomac can do it. No, he's not close enough, or maybe he, he might is. Be. It's out of a cannon. <laughs> it picks into that corner here at the FMF. Glen Helen National holding his own against Eli Tomac, who had a huge speed advantage over everyone a week ago at Hangtown. Side. Yeah, that line's definitely coming to its own with time going on today. But if we look at the lap times, the lap also remember they got the whole shot and won the first 450 moto last year. That team with Josh Grant on board. So those Yamahas, everyone talks about the different kind of engine configuration they have with them. Home and for us in the booth. The two guys that have the pace, obviously Roxon not quite up there. He's not 100%. And with that uh, opening lap crash, mana on mana. Well, the opening round is often a strange one in this. Everyone's guessing. You can go to the tracks. Leading, in fact. Tomac did close in, but I think you're right. It might have just been one mistake by Dungey, because now if Tomac's gotten within about 10 bike lengths, he hasn't been able to close it any further. It's quick. Yeah, these guys are. They're not holding back. They're pushing the pace. 
Tomac making a few little mistakes, but he's being very aggressive. He's going to get you a podium. That's right. It's tightened up again. Tomac versus Gunji. It's the far side of the track. The triple step up, and they call this turn the velodrome. Huge differential. See all the fans hanging over the fence. We got all these uh, almost uh, like the terrible towels in Pittsburgh. But oh, we've seen some good rides. Um, from some other riders, unfortunately, Anderson having some bad luck. Pike showed us some speed, or some good speed. Look at this, Tomac to the inside. inside. Can he get it down? He's got to close that door now, Dungey. Dungey launches. Technically, in 15 minutes, you can save 15% or more on your insurance. And it's the guy go Honda man that's hoping that this next 15 minutes is just a little bit better than the first 15 minutes. He's it's a shame that his last race here ended like that. Yeah, that's a net cap. Too bad. That guy, you can almost pencil him in in that 5 to 10 range no matter what happens. Unless the spokes come out of the front. Cheering his guy on. Now the big Talladega turn. Tomac going unbelievably fast on the entrance. Well, it's going to line now. See, again, they both wanted the outside. Tomac tried the inside the previous lap. It didn't work. So every one of these split sections, they've all kind of decided. It's a panic. Just keep that pressure on. But look Tomac at this. down the inside. He was using that hill, jumping up earlier. Is he able to make it work? Dungey's on the inside. Ryan Dungey said he'd be more competitive against Tomac this week. He is. Wait a minute. Dungey slowing down. Does he have a bike problem? To pump the electric starter button on the bike or bump it. Just lost power momentarily and with it the lead. My lifetime and uh, mind-blowing, but here he is, Eli Tomac, once again. Does it again, huge win for Eli Tomac. Vega, the biggest, widest, fastest first turn in all of motocross at the number three, Eli Tomac leading him around. Gian Marsha right behind him, so good start for those guys in all the races today. Don't you get to try to go after Tomac immediately? Dog, no trouble, he's trying to thread the needle between two riders, so all of our heavy hitters are in the top five right now. This should set up probably the highest paid rider. So we see Tomac jumping through that corner. A little swapped out. And if Dungey could keep Tomac in sight. A little bit over Barsha, who once again has his teammate Nicoletti behind him. That's fifth. Then it's Anderson, Reed, Porcel, Freezy, and Sealy. That's your top ten. Close this gap to Tomac, because I think once he loses tabs with Tomac, it's pretty much all she wrote. It'll be done from there. But keep him in sight. You can see his lines. You can see where he's you still have some tabs on it. That's what Dungey needs right now. And if you're Tomac, I mean, sorry, if you're Roxton, well, he's lost. He doesn't have to deal with Roxton, but what can you say about Tomac? He's got speed. That Maybe worked in the first motor, you know, line selection. Those lines are either not there or they've changed or they might not be the premier line. So way more brutal than it looks. And these guys have... Well, I say these guys. This guy in particular <laughs> has figured out a way to get around this track. I'll uh, go around there next time. That's a sign of confidence and just being cool, calm, and collected right there. Take a look over the shoulder. What does he see? No one. Is maybe not hitting the panic button, but they're going home thinking, man, you know, we've made some progress. We found a minute, but <laughs> we still need. Hopefully, the other guys have uh, said a few prayers and make a few changes on their bikes. and and figure it out, but the other guys are saying, go home, go to your other planet, E.T., because <laughs> you're out of this world right now. <laughs> Eli Tomac dominates Hangtown, dominates Glen Helen. Dungey leads him into the first turn of that orange number five and out. Motosport.com, whole shot for him. He's got big hitters. We're lined up side by side by side. The one, the five, and the three. And look at this. Whoa. They're first, second, and finishing in there on the Husqvarna. And this is a battle. And Roxon now takes the lead. Not this spot. Dungey. Now it's outside versus Ooh. inside. Roxon makes the outside work for how long? Wow. Showing the difference of lines yet. Boy, they are not going to make life easy on Tomac, who's going to have to pass the boat if he wants to keep the win streak alive. And nice job by Anderson back there. Because their native son is third and is trying to get Dungey for second. He might already have him. Yeah, just a long way around. Stays out of those deep ruts. Ryan Dungey takes oh, Dungey off the track. Oh, a terrible spot to go off. He's going to lose a ton of ground. At oh. least going to get passed by Anderson. Oh, he can't find an opening. There. Here we he go. is on the gas. He is putting the heat on just like he's done the first four motos, just showing that raw speed that he has. And try to hold these guys off. He's not hiding back there, but it is going to be awfully tough to hold off Tomac at his home track. Yeah. And have some creative lines, too. But basically, if you're Roxon, you know the pressure's on. And the best time to start 
as I always say, it's right now. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been yesterday or last yes. week, but it starts right now. <laughs> and be where he wants to be. So right now he's just trying to do the best he can in the physical condition that he is in. Sometimes and it's line selection. Other times he gets that leg up, has great technique, really just carrying a little bit more momentum everywhere. Yeah, he almost rides an altitude bike at normal tracks. So no changes were made to him. And obviously last week we spoke about that comfortability. And he lead. He's got the inside on Roxton. He worked him all the way around that left-hander at the top of the facility. He's taken the lead. And again, the fans come to life here. You can tell he's got some fight in him. He wants us. Their speed is very, very similar. But you see that, Jason, you don't have to make the pass. He just goes to the outside. Gave Tomac the inside, able to get the pass done. Now he's in the lead. Uh, you saw the graphic pop up on the screen there, of place. But you can't deny that extra push of all the home state fans, and that is certainly helping him today. In Colorado, looking for his fifth straight moto victory to start this season. He got around Ken Roxon just before he went to break, and he's already opened it up. Stood tall amongst this 450 field. Is this the closest race this year? At yeah, nearly 18, 18 seconds. They're getting closer. The flag coming out. Fans are pumped. Eli Tomac wins here in Colorado. Or casual fist pump. That was well, the gates down. You saw Porcel trying to work it up the inside, but at this point, is it going to be Sealy on the 14? Yes. Going all over the place, trying to find some clean real estate, find the line, not get roosted. So Bosch had barely got in for uh, trying to figure it out. Look Did at that round the Tomac. outside. Tomac. Yep. We talk about the momentum this guy carries everywhere. Goes a long way around. Nicoletti he's out of five. Looks like he's in a good position to make it six he's from trying six. To get he's right now. He doesn't wait at all now for second. And now he's going to go for the lead on Steely. Are you kidding me? Oh, the long way around. Look at that. Just stays out of the deep rut. Pretty accurate on your part to consider that anyone can keep the heat on it. That's going to be tough. Of course, it is racing anything. At NBC, that would be huge. We have a triple crown winner. Not too far removed from that on the hugeness scale is this guy. Right on a rough motocross track. Yeah, the bike's bouncing all over the place. He is handling it. No problem. We but he pushes the limits, but he does it at the right times. Do it in practice and qualifying. Because if you crash, guess what? No harm, no foul. Rocks five for five, looking for six for six, and then... Oh! oh! And down! And slow to... It's going for the motorcycle. He's not. You're sure he's points that are undefeated this year is favoring his left detrimental we talked about oh, uh, starting a season with all the confidence and this is just to the medics watch this just takes the front end and the oh the rear end goes first and watch that oh oh, oh his arm was fully extended he may have dislocated that shot right watch right here and then then it's just a high side and a slam that's a hard slam and uh, there's if there's one thing you do not want to do it is as they say go over the high side where you start leaning